The BMW 3 Series is here in India and we have driven it. The review of the Triumph Speed Twin. And a spate of new launches just ahead of the festive season. Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB and this is the Maruti Suzuki XL6. Thank you for joining us. I'm Siddharth Naik Parkinkar. We will have a glimpse at the brand new model from Maruti Suzuki on today's program. And there's lots more to take you through as well. Now, the review, we're still under an embargo. So which is why right at the top, let me tell you, no opinion on this car on today's program. But let's quickly get your opinion on the three series from BMW. Brand new car also that has just driven in. And this is the India spec. The BMW 3 Series is almost synonymous with what the Bavarian car maker is. The sports sedan has always been the one to beat when it came to sheer performance, sportiness and fun in the compact sedan space. Every car from the Lexus IS to the Jaguar XE have always benchmarked against this sedan not to mention the Mercedes-Benz C-Class and Audi A4 too. So, a new generation is always a big deal. And with the 7th generation BMW 3 Series, things take on a bit of an added meaning. And that is because it now gets to be not just the sporty and fun sedan from BMW, but also the company's most innovative, most intelligent and most connected car ever. Their words, not mine. So it was with a lot of fanfare that we drove different variants of the car when it first emerged at the end of 2018. And my anticipation and excitement is now back as the 3 Series is making its debut in India. As I told you back then, India will get the 330i petrol and the 320d diesel. Now the 3 Series gets to us in three variants. There's two on the diesel. This is the 320D. So you'll have the Sport, which is a base variant, if you want to call it that. And then the better loaded version, which is the luxury line that's with me. And that, of course, means you get lots of chrome. So uh, the front grille finished in chrome. That is that new big grille. You've got uh, this element, which is kind of like a signature to the 3 Series. And you'll see it on all the variants, except the M Sport trim. Now the 330i, the petrol, will come in the M Sport trim and it has this much larger, chunkier, sportier, snarling bumper. And uh, those of you who remember my global drive on this car a few months ago, that car, the blue one, Portima Blue, was the M Sport. So the big difference is really in the bumpers, but otherwise everything else on the car, you know, the hood with all the metal that has uh, musculature rising up, few very subtle cuts and lines across the side, all of the rest, like I said, remains pretty much the same. And for me, the one sort of highlight, the nice design feature that I've really appreciated, this beautiful 3D effect tail light. And this tail light styling is kind of in keeping with what's happening across the BMW range. And then, like I said, similar element in the rear bumper and the chrome tip exhausts on both sides to tell you that this is a luxury line. No badges on the car saying luxury line like you had on the last generation. All three versions will be made in India at BMW's Chennai facility. India will not be getting the range-topping 367bhp M340i X-Drive, sadly. Well, at least not at the launch. It may be brought in as an import option later on. The new 3 Series looks grown up, bold, decisive and very muscular. The confused, droop-down appearance of the previous car is gone and back is the very familiar taut muscle rippling through some tight compact proportions. Yes, the car looks ready for action and yet has a sense of width and sophistication. The cabin is very well finished and gives you an ample environment both in terms of space and materials 
as well as tech and gadgets. Ambient lighting details, even on the back door trim for instance, enhances the car's luxury quotient. The new 3 Series also gets the latest generation BMW iDrive 7.0 interface and a 12.3 inch touchscreen. In terms of spec and equipment, all very similar to what you would expect on the 3 Series and kind of like the last car, but material quality, finish and even the seat back angle and of course the legroom have been enhanced. You also get uh, your own little controls for the air conditioning back here with these two vents. You've uh, got the climate control setting for temperature as well as uh, the uh, fan speed being on auto and you've got two USB spots here that are going to be very, very appreciated because of course, let's face it, it is a 3 Series but there'll be lots of people sitting back here. Now, the dark brown palette, not quite to my liking but like I said, it's finished really well. The uh, elements for the ambient lighting as well as the metal work blended into the uh, door panel is really nicely done. On the road, the new generation BMW 3 Series sure feels like an all-new car. While the last car was reasonably sporty, the character on the new one is more obviously so. Yet, the engine choices may be a bit of a letdown as the 2-litre diesel and petrol are no fire starters. I remember feeling the same way during the global drive. Neither will they feel like they're letting you down, nor will they really get your attention or put a big broad smile on your face. So why then am I calling the car sportier than its predecessor? That goes to its handling and steering feel. The car's big USP, like most BMWs, will remain ride and handling. The ride quality on this new generation is just sublime. You'll find it really comfortable and yet very satisfying when it comes to being uh, kind of sporty and you know not giving you that very soft, mushy feel that you do get from some of the other sedans and for me in particular, that was the one big highlight even when I first drove the car. Both are excellent and the 3 Series feels like it should as a result. Ride quality is also great and it will feel well balanced to the Indian driver. And even though you get a sense that you're driving a bigger car than before, it's not in a way that will bother you. If anything, in the Indian context, that's probably a good thing. So the sharp steering and precise handling will definitely get your juices going. Now the 320D gets an inline 4-cylinder diesel with 186 bhp and 400 nm of peak torque. It will do 0 to 100 in 6.8 seconds and has a top speed of 243 km per hour. That's the car on your screens, though as you may recall, we also tested the new 330i before. The petrol inline 4 on the 330i has 253 bhp and also gets 400 nm of peak torque with a wide band from 1550 to 4400 rpm. Its top speed is 250 km per hour and it goes 0 to 100 in a second less than the diesel. Both engine types use the 8-speed Steptronic gearbox. Like I said, there is no word on the M340i X-Drive coming to India nor the plug-in hybrid that was recently introduced worldwide just a few days ago. The 330e makes 249 bhp and may still come to us by the end of 2020 as BMW starts to get serious about electrification across its range, not just globally but in India too. Like we've seen on the new X5, the new X7, pretty much all the new cars from BMW, here too on the 3 Series you get the uh, virtual assistant but none of the connected car features as I told you, they haven't come to India and that means everything offline still works, you can't go online, the assistant is not connected to the cloud and so you can't ask to sort of search for places even though there is navigation, however you can ask for some other practical things like, hi BMW, what's the tyre pressure like? Hi BMW, what's the tyre pressure like? The current pressure is alright for all tyres. 
All right. Hi, BMW. What's my remaining fuel level? The remaining range is 551 kilometers. All right, so I can go a fair distance, but as you can see, practical. The prices are competitive enough and BMW will like to believe that the lack of a credible rival at this stage will help it capture the compact premium sedan market. The Audi A4 has only fired so much, while the Mercedes-Benz C-Class is now beginning to age. The competition from Lexus, Jaguar and Volvo in India remains weak still. And so, the 3 Series is all set to thrill and I dare say, kill. The premium car buyer in India will like that it retains its traditional strengths and yet gives a bit more by way of luxury and comfort to give it a more all-rounder appeal than before. Expect to see a few of these on the roads. Could have been more had the automobile market not been badly hammered down as it were. So the very latest Beamer in town and now we go to the very latest from Triumph. This is a high performance roadster, the Speed Twin and King Shook spent some time with it to bring you this review. Talk about modern classics and the first motorcycle manufacturer that pops into one's mind is Triumph. The company's modern classic game is quite strong. Triumph Speed Twin is one of the new additions to the company's modern classic range in India. It is a pony all right, but it is so, so much more than just being an elder sibling to the Street Twin. There is a new pony in town and it is the new Triumph Speed Twin. Now Triumph, it loves its twins. I'm talking about the engines which it plonks in its modern classic range. Now this motorcycle is the latest addition to Triumph's modern classic ranks. It is an elegant, dapper looking motorcycle. Clean retro design, simple lines, and of course, it doesn't skimp on the glam quotient also. Quite a design then. Handsome is the word. The Speed Twin is akin to a Daniel Craig like James Bond showing up at a party wearing a well fitted suit. The big, rounded fuel tank with knee recesses, Monza-style filler cap and the fat Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 tyres scream performance out loud. The sophistication comes out by way of brushed aluminium parts, round LED headlamp and the twin pod instrument console, all of which is old school but definitely cool. Along with the lighter engine, Lightweight aluminium bits and the new alloys, the Speed Twin is about 7 kg lighter than the Thruxton R. As far as features are concerned, the Speed Twin gets right by by throttle along with 3 riding modes, Rain, Road and Sport. ABS and traction control are standard as well. The Speed Twin gets the same 1200cc parallel twin motor as the Thruxton R. 96 horses, 112 Nm and oodles of spine-tingling, grin-inducing performance. It may be a bonnie, but the performance is no less than any of the liter class nakeds. The bike beautifully balances performance and accessibility. It will be very easy for new riders, beginners, who are recently graduating to 1200cc motorcycles and also it won't leave seasoned riders wanting for more. Since performance is key, the 1200cc motor is the high power unit from Thruxton R and not the high torque motor from the Bobber, Speedmaster or the Bonnie T120. Overall, the engine is about 2.5 kg lighter than that of the Thruxton R. The motor pumps out 96 brake horsepower at 6750 rpm and the peak torque output is rated at 112 Nm at 4950 rpm.
The interesting part here is the fact that almost 100 Newton meters of torque comes in as the needle hits 2000 to 2200 RPM, offering a delicious pull of torque, which in turn leads to seriously quick acceleration. The kinds where you need to hang on to the handlebars for dear life. Plus, the strong bottom end and mid range means you need to shift gears less frequently, which will be a boon riding in the city. We told you how the parallel twin motor puts the speed in the speed twin. But complementing the engine are the grippy Pirelli Diablo Rossi 3 tyres and the sure footed way in which the motorcycle reacts to handling inputs. In case you're in the mood, the speed twin can handle high speed corners with aplomb as well. But what kind of stands out is the fact that the right quality is planned. It can take on bumps and potholes easily and won't leave you with a sore back. Plus, the ergonomics are quite comfortable too. The riding stance is upright and while the foot brakes may be slightly rear set, they just add that tiny bit of sportiness to the overall experience. At 9,46,000 rupees, this motorcycle should be on top of your list if you are in the market for a modern classic motorcycle. Make no mistake, this is a performance oriented motorcycle. It is made well, makes you look really good on the move and easy on the pocket as well, relatively speaking of course. Would I like to have one in my garage? Absolutely. The motorcycle offers solid performance, is built very well and at that price, it makes a lot of sense. With its capabilities, the Speed Twin can actually work as a daily riding machine and we believe will be a capable touring motorcycle as well. Absolute high voltage week in Motown because we had a bunch of launches and these launches were all very significant because we're talking volume models in the car space. The Hyundai Grand i10 gets a new generation. Then of course there's this car, the XL6, and then the one that all of you have been waiting for, the first product from Kia in India, the Seltos has arrived. Hyundai has launched the brand new Grand i10 Neos in India and it will be sold alongside the Grand i10 in the country. The car is launched in both petrol and diesel engine options and prices start at 4,99,000 rupees for the petrol, going all the way up to 7,13,000 rupees. The one with the AMT costs 6,37,000 rupees, topping out at 6,98,000 rupees. The diesel starts at 6,70,000 rupees and tops out at 7,99,000 rupees. There's an AMT available on the diesel too, which costs 7,85,000 rupees. The new Grand i10 Neos gets a fresh new face in line with its global design language. The front end gets new headlamp clusters with projector lamps. The front grille also gets a new shape and the inside boundary is flanked by two boomerang shaped LED daytime running lamps. Maruti Suzuki India Limited has launched the XL6 Premium MPV in India. Prices for the XL6 start at 9,79,000 rupees and go up to 11,46,000 rupees. The new XL6 is positioned as a premium MPV and will be retailed out of the company's Nexa dealerships. The XL6 is a six-seater with captain seats in the middle row and two-seater bench at the third. It is based on the company's hardtech platform and gets a fully redesigned front end which is in line with the company's European design language. The grille is flanked by new aggressive looking headlamps which have integrated LED daytime running lamps and indicators. The front bumper gets muscular lines, a wide central air damp and thick black cladding that house the new fog lamps and skid plate. The rear gets large swept back LED tail lamps as on the Ertiga but there are black inserts offering a sporty look. The rear bumper is all new and gets a silver skid plate adding to the glamorous element. As far as features are concerned, the XL6 will feature Smart Play Studio infotainment system with smartphone connectivity. It is equipped with a host of safety features such as dual front airbags, ABS with EBD, front seat belts with pretensioners and force limiters, Isofix child seat anchorages, high speed warning alert, reverse parking sensors, all of which are standard fitment across all variants. 
On the engine front, the XL6 is currently available only with a petrol engine which is BS6 compliant. It's a 1.5 litre unit churning out 103 brake horsepower and 138 Nm of torque. There's a 5-speed manual and a 4-speed automatic transmission up for grabs. Anticipated Kia Seltos has been finally launched in India with prices starting at 9,69,000 rupees and going up to 15,99,000 rupees for the top spec model. Kia has already received over 32,000 bookings for the Seltos and the deliveries will begin from today itself. In fact, Kia has already manufactured 5,000 units of the Seltos at its Andhra Pradesh plant. There are a total of 16 variants available with 3 engine options. There will be 1.5 litre petrol and diesel engines which make 113 brake horsepower each. The 1.4 litre turbo petrol makes 138 brake horsepower. Kia will offer manual and automatic transmission options across the board. Being its first model, Kia has made sure that the Seltos is loaded to the gills with many first in segment features such as connectivity, heads up display, drive modes, ventilated seats, air purifier and so on. And with that, it's a wrap here on CNB. Thank you for joining us and please react to all of this new metal that's come to the market. It's a good thing with new launches. Possibly we'll see some excitement returning to the space as well. Please react to the new uh, products for sure and also keep your feedback coming. Please wear your seatbelts as well. Bye-bye.